You'd have to be crazy to take a $360 beginner-friendly RC car and then put $1,000 plus worth of upgrades in it. Well, I did, and in this video, I'm gonna show you what I installed, why I installed it, and then we're gonna take these giant tires and put them on the truck, take it out and bash it, and see if it can hold up to the abuse. Before we get into that, I wanna remind you guys to please subscribe and hit that bell to get notified of future videos, future videos such as reviewing these really nice looking Ovonic 6200 milliamp hour 4S batteries, installing this really nice and I think very important rear motor brace for the Traxxas X-Max. We're gonna be doing some giveaways and a lot of other videos. So get subscribed and hit that bell to get notified if you don't wanna miss those. Also, let me know what kind of videos you're interested in seeing. I do these videos for you guys and I'm really curious to find out what you'd like to see in the future. All right, let's take a look at what's been done to this truck. The first thing I did was pull out the stock power system and install this Max 10 SCT combo. This has got the 3200 kV motor in it and I did this primarily so I could run 4S. This combo fits in really nicely where the stock one came out. The motor fits in the stock location and the ESC fits right on top of the radio box with the included mounting bracket that Hobbywing supplies. I also upgraded the cooling fans to wild turbo fans on both the motor and the ESC and I've upgraded the gearing in here as well as the mount but we're going to pull that apart in a minute and take a look at that. I installed the Arma center brace for the drive shaft for added support for that. I've got a Savox titanium gear servo here. And speaking of titanium, let's move over to the suspension. I installed these Lunsford Racing titanium turnbuckles. I put these Lunsford Racing titanium turnbuckles on pretty much every vehicle that I can. I find they're really strong. They're a little bit lighter. That doesn't make that much difference. But Lunsford Racing also has a lifetime warranty on their products, which is really cool. I went ahead and installed these hot racing ball ends on here because the plastic ones wear out pretty quickly. These were really tight. I had to do some work on them, but they have been holding up pretty well since I polished them down and got them fitting properly. I do have the stock rod ends on here. I haven't replaced those with RPM just because there's been no reason to. They've been holding up great. Moving down a little bit, we've got hot racing aluminum hubs and knuckles. I'm not sure these are fully necessary, but they definitely stiffen up the handling and I think that they work pretty well. I then added the M2C 17 millimeter hexes. I put these on here so I could have a wider variety of tire choice in larger tires, as well as 17 millimeter hexes are more durable. These M2C hexes are really awesome. They've got a set screw that goes down the middle and holds them on, keeps them really tight against the axle, which is really good. And then these nuts that they supply not only are flanged, but they also have the divots in the backside of them that dig into your wheel and prevent them from coming back off. Moving around to the front, up here at the top of the shock towers, I have these GPM shock tower reinforcements. I don't normally buy GPM products, but these are the only option for shock tower reinforcement. I did trim them though. Uh, these normally have a piece that sticks out that allows you to move the shocks out further. I didn't want to do that, so I just trimmed those off. Attached to these, I have the new Proline Power Stroke shocks for the 3S line. I've put these shocks on a lot of different vehicles and I have never had a single problem with any of them. I've never been to shaft, I've never had them leak. They work great. They're really expensive, but I think if you're putting upgraded shocks on the 3S line, these Proline Power Strokes are your best bet. Those are attached to RPM arms. I installed these because I broke one of the stock arms pretty much right away. So far, I have not broken any of these RPM arms. Now inside here, we've got a lot of steel, a lot of aluminum, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull the differential out and pull the motor out and then we'll take a look at what's going on inside. Man, if you're just getting started with the RC hobby and you're intimidated by working on your own vehicles, I would definitely suggest picking one of these things up. They're so easy to work on. I just had this whole rear end completely torn apart in like a minute. All right, let's take a look at what we've got going on in the internals. Like I said, I've got the 3200 kV motor from Hobbywing on here. I went ahead and used the stock Arma heatsink, worked just fine. Inside, we've got the steel Arma spur gear with hot racing aluminum slipper clutch plates. I think these aluminum slipper clutch plates work really, really well. I had almost burned up my stock slipper clutch plates, and so far I've been running these for a while now, and they're holding up great, so I definitely recommend picking these up. Behind that, we've got the M2C Racing motor mount plate. This is an amazing upgrade. The stock motor mount plate is pretty weak and bends fairly easily, especially if you're doing big jumps. This motor mount plate is thick, beefy, 7075 aluminum, and holds up amazingly well. 
To go along with that, I've got the M2C motor mount brace here. This is another great piece. It is upgraded from the stock plastic part as well as it has a screw that goes through here and into the motor mount that helps strengthen everything and keep it all in line. Moving on to the rest of the drivetrain, this is one of the more expensive, but I think one of the more important upgrades you can do to this truck, especially if you're gonna be running big power. I have the Arma steel ring and pinion gears on here. Last thing I wanted to show you is this custom painted body. I had a local artist do this for me, and then I did the shoe goo and drywall tape method of reinforcing the body. Let me know if you guys want me to do a video on my method for doing drywall tape and shoe goo. Done quite a few of these, and I think I've got a method down pretty well. All right, that's about it for upgrades. I'm gonna get this back together, and we're gonna throw those ridiculous tires on there, and we'll get it out and see if we can break it. <laughs> Well, I tried to break it and I did. I sheared this little pin on the CVD. I'm not really surprised it happened. I was running these great big tires on 4S and pushing the truck pretty hard. Overall, I'm still very happy with it. So should you build something like this? Probably not. I really enjoyed the build process, but you can get a 6S truck and put a bunch of upgrades into it and still end up spending less money. That being said, I love this little truck. It's a lot of fun and I really enjoyed sharing it with you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you have any questions, drop a comment. Otherwise, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.